Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, welcome to a brand new video and welcome to Avery's first day at nursery! So today I'm taking Avery to nursery for the very first time. Um, I am going to be staying with her, this is basically like one of a few little introductory sessions whereby they're kind of much shorter than um, what her normal kind of blocks will be. Um, I'm taking her in at half one, so we do need to leave in about five minutes. And um, Avery's portage worker, it's okay. Avery's portage worker is gonna meet me there. She is gonna be coming to this session. And then we have two more of these shorter sessions next week where other therapists are gonna be coming to those as well. So I am going to kind of sit down and explain the sort of process and how we're kind of doing it, you know, what way we're, we've decided to kind of go forward with this process. I'm gonna sit down and kind of explain it to you fully. Not right now though, because as I said, we do need to leave in about five minutes, but I will give you um, an update and also let you know how, how she got on in there. I'm very, very, very excited for this um, new chapter for her. I'm really keeping my fingers crossed that mixing with other children will really help her kind of social and cognitive development, maybe even her physical development too, because children can learn so much from other children their age. I am not putting Avery splints on her today, um, purely because I want her to go feeling comfortable. Um, I want her to start off on the right foot, feel really comfortable in the way she is, and then therefore hopefully feel comfortable there. Um, but like I said, I will sort of um, sit down and explain the process that we're gonna be going through, how it's all gonna work. I have also tried a slightly different hairstyle with Avery today. She's been a little bit dystonic at the moment, so it's quite difficult to show you or even hold her to be honest, but, um, We've got a little ponytail in the back. You can't see that because of the way she's craning her neck. We've got a little ponytail in the back, which we don't normally do, um, just because of her dystonia, and she kind of just messes up anything that we do in the back. Oh, dear Avery. Um, believe it or not, she is in an okay mood today. Um, she's just not happy at the moment because I've just changed her bum and turned her TV off, so. She's probably a little bit angry with me, but it's okay. We're gonna have a lovely first day at nursery, aren't we? Hey, are you gonna make some new friends? I am not gonna vlog um, at the nursery, obviously, but I'm, I'm not really gonna film any B-roll clips of us going to nursery at all, to be honest, because I just wanna put my full focus on Avery. I really want to make this work. I really want this to be good for her, so. Um, I'm gonna go try and cheer her up a little bit and then we are going to head off to nursery. First day at nursery. First day at nursery, baby girl. Big girl. Good morning, guys. It is the next day. Don't worry, I will catch you up on how Avery's first little visit to nursery went. But first, I've got a little Timu haul to show you guys. I picked up a couple of bits. So I just thought I'd show you. A lot of you are quite um, interested in the quality of things from Timu. I've been absolutely loving it. I do actually have a few more seasonal bits coming, but they're not here yet. So I thought I'd just show you what I've got now. So the whole order was actually purchased because of these and these alone. Um, these were really, really inexpensive and I have a new sideboard coming, but I don't particularly like the handles. So I thought I would get a nice kind of antique bronze kind of handle and Timu was the cheapest place to get them and to be honest they're pretty decent quality to be fair I can't really complain they are just like a an antique brass antique bronze kind of weathered look it's not really much more to say but it came in a pack of 12 so what I thought with the rest of them I can actually use these on my new kitchen units because again I don't particularly love the handles on them they're more of a shiny chrome effect I prefer a more sort of weathered looking handle so yeah these were really inexpensive 
and um, if you've shopped on TV before you know that they do have a £10 minimum spend so I needed to uh, buy a few other little bits to bulk up the order because like I said these were quite cheap I'm pretty sure these were around £4 which is pretty good for £12 um, drawer handles. So the next thing I picked up was this. I've had my cake scraper for years so I thought it was about time to upgrade to a nice metal one. I also like the wooden handle on this. I think the only thing that bothers me with this is that the edge on the bottom isn't perfectly straight but that's not Timu's fault. I was aware of that from the pictures. It's just I liked the look of this one and I'm sure it will still work fine. The next thing is some toothbrushes. This haul is very random. Like I said, I was just trying to find some really cheap things that I could bulk up the order with to £10. I liked the colour of these, so I thought that when the boys are due a toothbrush change, Josh and I have electric ones, but when the boys are due a toothbrush change, these would look much more aesthetically pleasing in the bathroom. They're just these really nice muted tones, uh, mostly neutral apart from the one sort of powder blue colour. Um, not much more to say about them really, they're toothbrushes. <laughs> and then the last thing I picked up was a new apron. Um, I've got one, but it's a Christmas one. So I thought this would actually be nice to protect my clothes when I'm doing my baking. I really like the color. It's a nice sort of olive green and white. And the only other detail on it really is the little label on the pocket. It does have a nice big double pocket here as well. And again, this was really inexpensive and I was just trying to bulk up the order. So there you have it, my very mini Timu haul. Um, again, they continue to impress me. I will continue to buy from there. Like I said, I do have some seasonal bits coming. So I'll show you those in another vlog when they do arrive. But let me take you down to Avery and uh, catch you up on how her nursery visit went. So I will say, that Avery is not in the best of moods today. She is quite crabby and I don't know why. Um, she hasn't been for a poo yet today, so that very well could be the reason. Anyway, so yesterday, I think it went really, really well. So when we, oh dear, this is what I mean. She's just not in a good mood today when we um when we arrived they had actually set up a little space on the floor they'd laid a blanket down they would put like a baby play gym out and then surrounded it with lots of different types of toys or just things that avery could play with kind of sensory type toys i would say and they said they'd done that because they'd seen the setup she has at home and where she's most comfortable as you guys know it's in her love every play gym um in the living room so they'd kind of tried to mimic that sort of environment for her they had music playing and i'll also say avery had the entire classroom to herself yesterday um they're in the middle of doing their kind of transitional um their sort of transitional uh i've just had a complete brain fart <laughs> They're in like their transitional time where children are kind of coming in at certain times of the day while they get used to the nursery and they had blocked out the space for Avery to go in on her own just so that she could kind of be in the environment with the sounds and the smells and the teachers before she's then surrounded by lots of other children. They just thought it would be a little bit less overwhelming for her that way and a nice way to sort of graduate into the setting. So yeah, they had music playing and they had mimicked her kind of um, comfortable place at home, which I thought was really nice. I also liked the fact they t they'd taken on board little things that I'd said, um, like when I'd mentioned, oh yep, she likes this and she likes that. So I said that Avery likes sort of rough textures. She likes feeling lots of different rough textures, um, more so than softer textures. So they'd actually pulled a load of um, different objects with rough textures, textures. So like, um, like those wooden scrubbing brushes and, um, what are they called um those things that you usually find in the bathroom like a like a like a sponge but not the texture of a sponge um oh pudding no oh i think some of you will um know what i mean uh, hopefully you do anyway because i feel like i'm not explaining that very well but objects with kind of rough textures things that will give her a strong sensory input. And then they'd kind of pulled out, careful pudding, they'd kind of pulled out 
sort of um remember that old school fabric you used to get in sort of the 90s and early 2000s where it kind of looked like there was tiny little mirrors tiny little um like mirrored sequins all over it and it was a silver fabric they pulled out like a piece of that and they had a mirror there as well because i told them that avery likes mirrors and rattles things with sounds they basically just listened to what i'd said to them all the things that um i know that avery enjoys and they just basically pulled a selection of things out based on that and surrounded them around this area um for avery so we did end up staying in the one area the entire time we were only there for an hour just because this is sort of a stay in play slash settling in session for avery and um for the first sort of i'd say five to ten minutes they basically just observed how i interacted with avery and then they sort of slowly started to take part as well and i really liked that i liked that they took the time to observe the way i was interacting with her so that they can kind of mimic that as well because avery as we all know is a very particular child and even something as small as an interaction um makes a big difference and I, I liked the fact that they really were paying attention to detail and um as we were sort of playing with avery we were just talking and i was kind of bringing up things that she did like and things that she didn't like and i think it was just a really good session um there was one point that i kind of moved away from the floor area to go and talk to another teacher to update her on her epilepsy um kind of care plan and um it meant that that was a little bit of time then where avery couldn't necessarily see me she might have been able to hear me because i was still in the same room but she couldn't see me but i could see her i knew she was okay and it just gave me that little bit of a chance to take the very first step in sort of moving away and leaving her in the hands of people i don't know essentially and um it went well so avery's portage worker came with me yesterday which i think was a really good start because avery's very much used to her portage worker and she likes her um she's also going to be coming with me to the next two sessions which are next week or it might actually be one session next week and then maybe a session the week after i think um but in terms of the process so obviously avery's a complex little girl and um she definitely needs additional funding um, we have applied for an EHCP for Avery and if you're not from the UK that is an educational healthcare plan. It's a plan that is um, awarded to children who do need more funding and more support in schools. Um, so Zachary, my eldest, he has an EHCP and the process for getting his was much simpler. Um, he actually got his EHCP I think within the first term of him starting primary school. Um, when he was in a nursery setting, we were still kind of learning about his additional needs then. They weren't even picked up until he started a setting. Um, but for Avery, obviously, we know, and she needs she needs that EHCP even for a preschool slash nursery setting. So we started the application for Avery's EHCP in November. And I'm not sure if it's different in different counties, but where we are, they have a 20-week deadline. That is their deadline to um, have that decision made on the EHCP, um, for the EHCP to go to panel. We still don't have it, nearly a year on. And that, in my opinion, is, it's not very good. But I know I'm not alone in that. It is it's a big problem apparently they're very backlogged they have a lot to get through so it's not just avery who is waiting on her ehcp but luckily there is other funding um there is other funding that the nursery have applied for um sort of as interim in the meantime because obviously with avery she 100 percent needs one-to-one -one care and just bog standard um kind of government funding that schools get oh we've lost classes the bog standard do you know what? let's just take them off put in they're not really staying put right now are they um bog standard um like government funding that schools have wouldn't cover a one-to-one -one for children which is why they need that additional funding i know there's some children that even need two to one for particular cares um so they've applied for the interim funding and that is what avery will start with so she does have a one-to-one -one. we have met her she was there yesterday as well obviously and then in terms of training 
all of the staff that will be kind of looking after Avery so not just the one-to-one -one, but a few others as well because obviously sometimes people can be poorly sometimes there may be a reason someone else needs to take over with Avery but everyone that takes over with Avery everyone that one-to-ones with her will be trained in all areas of her care so um today obviously Avery's not going in today but today the epilepsy nurse is actually going in to start the training for um Avery's care plan for her ep epilepsy because that is a big one in terms of medical if Avery's going to have an emergency in nursery more than likely it would be epilepsy fingers crossed that won't be the case but it is important that they're trained they're trained to give you the, give the rescue med they are um you know fully kind of knowledgeable about her care plan and they know exactly what to do and exactly what to look out for. So the epilepsy nurse is doing that training. Avery's physiotherapist is coming in on Monday next week when we take her in. So she will be giving them some training on her sort of physio in terms of where she's at now, what she needs to be doing now and what her targets are. And then they can kind of um, integrate some physiotherapy within her nursery days as well. Now obviously everything that Avery is going to be doing more than likely is going to be play based, it's going to be nice and easy and relaxed for her but there are ways that you kind of integrate physiotherapy into little day to day things um, such as stretching out Avery's legs and putting her splints on, things like that, they will learn um, learn how to do that as well. I believe Avery's occupational therapist is also going to be in on Monday as well and she will teach them how to set up Avery's equipment and get her in and out. Now in terms of equipment the nursery isn't going to have much because she's not going to be there for long so there won't be a stander there, there won't be um there won't really be much there at all in terms of equipment. The only thing for now that Avery will have in the setting will be a special tomato sitter. That's the one that I use in her push chair. Um, I know she tolerates it for periods of time and we know that she's relatively comfortable in it. Now, if we had have sent an expander over there, no, absolutely not. I wanted something that she was going to be comfortable in. So uh, they are going to have a special tomato sitter and it's going to have the base so it will be easily moved around the setting if they go from room to room or if Avery goes into the sensory room. Um, I have said I have said to them that normally we would just carry her but as we all know Avery is getting much bigger. I feel like I've said as we all know a million times already. Avery is getting bigger. It's not exactly realistic to always carry her especially if she's dystonic especially for people that don't understand her pattern straight away but again this is another reason why we're doing so much stay and play and I'm going with her for so long. So timeline. We don't really have one yet. Avery has two more stay and play sessions next week. So those are about an hour each on Monday and Tuesday. And then following that week, she is going to be going in her um, booked slot. So she's gonna be going on a Monday morning for three hours and then a Tuesday afternoon for three hours. That is what we're starting with. And for the foreseeable, I will be going with her. She doesn't need to stay for the entire block. If she gets tired or I feel like she's gotten overwhelmed, then I will take her home. And I feel like that is just gonna be the best way to transition her into it. Um, within that time, the staff will continue to get more training. Um, the nurse will need to go in, Avery's community care nurse will need to go in to train them up on Avery's G-tube. Also the um, Abbott, the company that supply the pump, will need to go in and do training on the pump. And until um, the staff are all signed off on these things, I can't, um, I can't leave them to be responsible for these things. So Avery can't be fed there until um, they're trained. Um, to feed her basically um, but the timings that she's got work out pretty well because in the morning um, I can feed her as soon as I pick her up and then the same again for the afternoon session I can feed her when I pick her up so she won't um, she won't be there in a time that she needs to be fed to start with basically and um, I think the plan from there is um slowly i will start to kind of remove myself from the room so it might start out being i step into the office for five minutes and then maybe i step into the office for 10 minutes and then maybe i kind of go outside the nursery out onto the street or you know go for a walk for 10 minutes and then slowly i'll build up that time until eventually avery will um 
can be dropped off there and picked up there. Um, which I feel like maybe is a little bit of a ways off. I think, oh dear. I think the goal that I was talking to Avery's portage worker about was maybe having her um, there without me by October half term potentially. And that is kind of just a rough, that's a rough target. If I don't feel comfortable to leave her on her own by that point, then I won't. And the nursery will not put any pressure on me to leave her there um, if I don't want to. I I think I'm just gonna go by my instincts. I am gonna kind of observe the staff. I'm gonna obviously let them take over more and more and observe them and see how well they're able to keep her happy, if Avery's comfortable with them, if they seem comfortable handling her um so yeah that is the plan it's very scary but also very exciting i'm looking forward to next week when avery gets to meet some of the children because the children will be there at her next day and play session i've already said to the nursery the likelihood is avery will just be quite happy observing the other children because avery loves to watch other children um, she's got a couple of cousins her own age and whenever they're around she just her eyes just follow them like a hawk she loves watching other children don't you put in oh you're not you don't seem comfortable you don't seem comfortable today baby girl so yeah um the process has begun which is very nice but so far i'm happy i i like the setting i obviously knew that before we went forward in applying to the setting um it has it's all kind of on ground level which was obviously a big factor for me um they have like a an outdoor area almost like a sensory garden outside which is really really nice and i know that avery will love that and they also have um it's almost like a suspended swing type thing made with fabric almost like a hammock but it's suspended from the ceiling and it has all kind of been safety checked but they used that for a little boy who had additional needs who's no longer there and um, i actually said to them well actually that is something that avery would love avery loves being swung i've explained that she loves strong sensory input i've explained that she loves movement they also have a sensory room which is great so that is somewhere that she could go if maybe she's getting a bit overwhelmed and um they've basically said that the goal is to have avery involved in everything all of the activities the other children are doing just with that additional support so it doesn't necessarily mean she's going to be able to do these things but she will be involved so if avery's going to go to the sensory room it won't just be avery there'll be a few other children that go as well it will never be a case where avery is kind of taken off on her own because she can't necessarily take part in the activity that they're doing in the class unless of course she is getting overwhelmed and she needs a bit of time on her own that that's obviously a different scenario but i am i'm really happy with it so far the um teachers are really nice avery's one-to-one -one are really nice they're very attentive and they're very observant and they do seem to really be taking in what i'm saying and they seem to be really eager to learn um all about avery which is really really nice so i'm i'm happy so far i'm excited to see how it goes and also terrified <laughs> which i think is completely natural i mean i was terrified when both of my boys went to nursery it's it's a new chapter it's a new environment it's it's new territory but so far i've had no red flags and i think we're actually planning for josh to maybe come to one of the stay and play sessions soon as well just so that he can get that comfort and um he can feel at peace with avery being there as well because i'm not sure if i've mentioned but josh has never been on board with avery going to nursery it has been me that's pushed for it because i know how well children can get on in nursery and i know the potential that it could do for her basically um avery would sorry josh would have avery at home with me for the rest of her life <laughs> if he could but she will need to start school in a couple of years time so i would rather get her used to an educational setting now so that it doesn't seem like a, such a big transition when that does happen um but josh is obviously you know he's not he's not against it to the point where you know we don't agree he he understands my reasoning he understands why i think it's best for avery but i think just emotionally he he doesn't like it but 
we're going to prove him wrong hopefully i think it will be really good for him he has seen the setting he went and visited it um, but i think it will be really good for him to see avery there and to see him interacting with her teachers and to meet her one-to-one -one. um so that should be happening in the next few weeks hopefully very exciting yeah. stuff so um it's currently 5 to 11. um i am feeding little madam a little bit early today so i'm gonna go and set that up in just a sec because avery actually has her cerebral palsy review today at the hospital um now it's okay those of you that have been around for a while might have remembered the last one she had it's basically where they took some measurements of her legs and her back and um kind of tested the range of range of motion in them um so this is basically just um another one because they like to do them fairly frequently so that they can compare and see if her tone is getting any worse and to see if any of her bones are becoming affected now when we last went her hamstring on her left leg was still in the green zone but it was borderline becoming an issue i have a feeling that this time we may see um we may see that that leg is worse because I feel that it's worse. Avery's physio feels that it was worse. So I feel like that left leg may be in the amber area now, which, you know, knowing that information on paper, I'm not sure if it will really change anything. We're doing all that we can. Um, we're, we're still waiting for Avery's Botox referral. I don't know if that would potentially push that referral a little bit more. Uh, oh, hi. Hi. Um, but it would still be good to know sort of where she's at in terms of her tone. <laughs> what? Yeah. Hi. Yeah, it'd be good to know, but, um, I will update you. Oh my goodness, it's just gone really bright all of a sudden. Hopefully the camera will, will adjust in a second. Um. Ah! Oh, good. I will update you on how that goes. Once again, I am not going to vlog any B-roll footage of this hospital visit purely because I feel like you have seen so much of us <coughs> walking into town and getting on the bus and walking into that. I feel like you've seen so much of it. And honestly, with Avery being so fussy, I think it would just be a bit too much. So this vlog is probably, it's not, it's not, I'm not doing much vlogging really, am I? I'm not really taking you around with me, but this vlog is probably mostly gonna be me kind of giving you updates, which I know isn't the most, uh, the most riveting content, but um i know that you guys like to um be updated on avery's progression and where she's at so um essentially really this is just a bit of an update video um but yeah um i will catch up with you probably tomorrow now because by the time we get back it will probably be school run rush time and once again madam is just not in the best of moods um so i'll probably update you tomorrow on how that goes okay okay shall we feed you now hey eh? shall we feed you now and then maybe you'll do a poo and then maybe you'll be happy hey eh? you know those days that just feel like it would have been better if you just didn't get out of bed in the morning those days when everything seems to go wrong so um for starters on the way to the hospital a, I broke a nail, which, <laughs> first world problems. B, it started to bucket down. And I know I wasn't the only one that thought it was going to be sunny today by what everyone was wearing, walking around in the pouring rain. Um, but I had my washing out. Again, first world problems, but it's annoying. And then to top it all off, we got to the hospital and um, Avery wasn't on the list and she said maybe there's a clinic she doesn't know about and i just knew then i knew i've got the wrong day i've got the wrong day maybe it's on thursday or something so i went and sat down in the waiting room and she comes back to me and hands me the letter i was a month early her appointment is the 12th of next month so um no one can say i wasn't punctual <laughs> but just so annoying so i had to turn straight back around and get back on the bus <laughs> and then walk back up that hill for no reason i could have stayed in the house in the dry i could have pulled my washing in before it started to rain and 
it's not that big of a deal but you know those days when it just feels like everything is working against you today is one of those days for me anyway i have corrected the day i fixed my nail <laughs> my washing is now in i've just paused the tumble dryer so i can talk to you and i'm in the process of um just replacing the doorknobs on the cupboards so i thought i would oh my god <laughs> The tarp that we've got covering our outdoor furniture is blowing around and I just saw it out of the corner of my eye and it scared the absolute crap out of me. Anyway, let me show you the cupboards. So this is the before door handles. This is the ones that the unit came with. And then this is the new door handles. So obviously not a drastic difference. However, I do just feel like it's made the unit look more expensive than it is. And considering I only paid £4 to do it, I am fairly happy with that. Good morning, guys. It's the next morning now. Um, hopefully gonna have a better day today, but um, we've just dropped the boys off at school. I am just <laughs> playing with Avery a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna close this video off here, I think, just because, put you a bit closer here. just because um <laughs> because this video has been mostly me talking i feel like considering it's already 30 minutes long if i make it any longer it would just it would drag on no one needs to listen to me talking for more than 30 minutes so i hope you have enjoyed the update and uh, let's all keep our fingers crossed that avery's nursery journey continues to be positive i will obviously update you along the way um, if you've enjoyed the video, then please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to follow us along and follow Avery's nursery journey. And uh, I'll see you in a few days with another video. Bye, guys.